Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to this LTEC webinar on Rectiverters for Railway Applications. My name is Geir Wolded, and I have the pleasure of hosting this webinar alongside with our product experts and presenters, Björn and Milo. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the first presenter of the day, Björn Hovard Stocke. Good morning, Björn. How are you? Good morning, Geir. Good morning, uh, all uh, attendees of this webinar. I'm fine, thank you. So I'll uh, go through uh, the Rectiverter uh, module uh, and also the concept of the Rectiverter. Uh, and then Milan will uh, show some uh, uh, solutions, system solutions, uh, using the Rectiverter later. Um, so uh, looking at the Rectiverter concept, um, the Rectiverter is a, a three-port power module with uh, AC input and uh, a bidirectional DC port and AC output. And uh, this uh, box or power module, it does three, uh, at least three functions. Uh, it can be operated as a rectifier, taking uh, from uh, uh, AC input to DC output, um, and I can see my animations is not working here, but that's fine. Uh, and it's uh, working as an inverter from DC to uh, AC output. Um, oh, here it comes. Uh, and also as a AC AC conditioner, um, it will filter some noise, and it also keeps a constant uh, voltage on the AC output, regardless of AC input voltage. Um, and it also does a seamless uh, transfer from uh, powering uh, the AC load from AC input to uh, power it from DC input uh, in inverter mode if there is a loss in the AC input. And of course vice versa, when the AC input is back then it will sync on to the uh, face, input, face of the AC input and then go back to mains mode and power from AC input. Okay, some uh, more animations there. Um, it also has uh, on uh, the later 48 volt uh, uh, versions, it also has the ability to power both from AC input and DC input at the same time. Uh, and in this mode you can utilize uh, when you have excessive power on the DC side, for instance, in a solar system, uh, it can take the excessive power from DC and then just the rest from AC input. So that uh, gives some more possibilities. Um, looking at the <coughs> traditional UPS design, uh, it could either be uh, like this with mixed AC and DC loads, or it could be just a, a big uh, battery, long uh, uh, backup time, and it will typically look like this. You have uh, sort of your AC UPS uh, with inverter and, and static switch, and then you uh, typically need a rectifier system in addition to power uh, DC loads and also to charge a bigger battery. The UPS itself typically has a limited uh, charging capacity, so for half hour or five minutes, that's that's uh, it can charge itself. Um, but on a bigger backup, you typically need a rectifier system. Uh, so uh, with the rectiverter, it, it's uh, very simplified because uh, it uh, actually does uh, the job for all these uh, three boxes uh, and. Uh, Power both the DC loads and uh, charge the battery, and the um, it also powers the AC output, and it does the the same uh, functionality as the uh, static switch. Um, that it means uh, uh, transferring uh, energy consumption from AC input or uh, DC input to power the AC output. That's uh, it's limited. To that it doesn't do all the functionality um, from um, a static switch, but uh, the, the 
the most important one. Okay, uh, some highlights of the module. Uh, as I said, it's a rectifier, sine wave inverter, and and built-in transfer technology. It's uh, what we call uh, call the um, uh, the functionality similar to static switch um, in uh, in a single box. And uh, mechanically, it's it's the same box and and form factor as the flatback two family, which you might may be might be aware of or uh, um, have uh, used uh, and you have some experience with um, and it's the same modular concept that means all this uh, functionality here is uh, redundant including the uh, uh, transferring uh, energy consumption from AC input and DC input um, which is very, very good. Uh, and uh, then you have uh, it's high efficiency, 96% in mains mode, and it's 94% in vert mode. Um, and uh, it's uh, the AC output is uh, 1200 watts, uh, active power. Uh, it will give you 1500 VA uh, on 0.8 uh, power factor. And DC output is uh, 1200 watt uh, maximum. Uh, however, the maximum uh, total power is 2000 watt. So if uh, you utilize the full power on AC, you only have 800 watt for DC. Uh, so um, looking on the AC ports, um, the AC output that is uh, the primary port, uh, which means it has priority, um, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, set up or controlled as I use you set a fixed uh, voltage, which is uh, configurable, um, and then the output is uh, current limited, uh, and it also does uh, support overload uh, for up to 15 seconds. Uh, with uh, 10 minute recovery if you use the complete uh, 15 seconds. Um, and then it uh, uh, monitors the active power to determine if it's uh, in overload, overload conditions or not. I'll have some more details on the next slide. Um, and uh, as mentioned, the DC output uh, is, uh, is, uh, is secondary. It, it, does not have the priority. So if you use, uh, utilize the AC output completely and pull 1200 watt from that port, you have 1800 watt available for charging and feeding the uh, DC loads. Uh, but uh, this uh, module is always used with a battery, so DC side um, uh, can handle that for uh, for load peaks. Um, and uh, it's the DC port is if you're used to a flatback 2 or uh, any other LTEC rectifier, it, it has uh, more or less the same specification and, and uh, operations and, and uh, everything as uh, charge current limitation and float voltage. And this is, is uh, as you are used to with a rectifier. Um, then uh, looking at some more details at the of the AC port, uh, this is uh, shown for 230 volt range. We also have a 115 volt range where the voltage is uh, tuned down to a lower uh, voltage uh, to 100 to 127 volts, but you still have the same current limit, so it's then 600 watts. So, but I'll I'll touch this one uh, first. I think 230 is the most used. Uh, so when it comes from factory, you have uh, 230 volt as uh, the set point, uh, but you can adjust it between 200 and 240 volt. Uh, and uh, output power is uh, 1200 watt. Uh, this is the nominal continuous uh, maximum power it can supply. Um, and then it does uh, 2000 VA for uh, up to 15 seconds. On uh, the 
a current limitation. It's maximum 6.5 amps uh, continuous uh, current. Um, and this is related to the uh, active power consumption. Uh, and uh, the overload uh, limitation is 8.7 amps, uh, which is sort of the the normal, if you haven't used the 15 seconds, this is the, the uh, current limitation that uh, resides in the in the module. Um, and then it has a 32 amp peak current if there is a short on the AC output to help clear the faulty, open the fuse uh, or breaker of the faulty load branch. Uh, and it's uh, default is, uh, 50 hertz. Uh, once you put it out, you take it out of its uh, box and uh, put it into the system. It's 50 hertz, um, and it's, we also we say adaptive, so it will sync both to 50 hertz and 60 hertz. Uh, but if you plug it as an inverter, it will be 50 hertz. Uh, and uh, yeah, well just uh, this uh, is about the input range. Uh, it's uh, 185 to 275 is the uh, the AC uh, input voltage window. And uh, once powered, uh, it goes down to 170 if there is a brownout uh, on the uh, AC supply. Um, some words uh, on the DC port. Um, looking first on the 48 volt uh, variant, um, this is, uh, so it's many part numbers, which is maybe confusing, but uh, it's uh, the main part number is uh, full power, 1200 watts. Um, and uh, then we have uh, sort of adapted to the UPS industry where you have, uh, can have different uh, DC power levels, or you can sort of buy more DC power if needed. They, they have, so we made these more part numbers. So we have, uh, one with uh, only 150 watts, uh, and <clears throat> this is uh, very good for uh, if you have a pure UPS and only half hour backup requirement. This this is the part number to use, <clears throat> and it uh, a technical benefit for this is that it consumes less. Uh, it has consumes less current on the uh, AC input, so. You can have a smaller input uh, fusing. And uh, the one with zero watt is, uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's a asterisk here and it's, um, it's just current and power uh, limited. So if you power this one with the uh, AC input port, if, if you power that as you can do, uh, and you will still see a sort of a voltage and, uh, and even a small current. So it's it's not like uh, the DC port is a pure um, is a pure input port. It's still bidirectional. So that has been a surprise to some. So we we mention this now. Uh, and these other L part numbers is this uh, 115 uh, low voltage range. Um, so we have. Uh, uh, separated uh, this uh, in uh, in keying in the system, so to make sure you don't uh, put the incorrect module into the system. Okay, that's the 48 volt. Uh, so on the the parameters on the voltage, uh, it's uh, in inverter mode. It's uh, full functionality, everything, uh, 45 to 58 volt, and then we have the extended range down to 40 volt. Uh, where it, uh, our, uh, the module is uh, not able to do this uh, 2000 VA in overload. Uh, and also there's a small, currently today it's a small uh, derating and the output uh, uh, power capability, and that's limited to the uh, this, the peak voltage of the AC output is reduced when the DC uh, voltage is uh, this low, below uh, 45. Uh, and uh, yeah, input current maximum is uh, 48 volt, um, and the, the, uh, there is a small current limit, uh, current ripple uh, below 2.5 amps. Um, yeah. 
so this is uh, basically just showing the available AC output power versus the DC voltage in inverter mode. And then output is uh, typically same as rectifier, 53 and a half, 43 to 58 adjustable voltage to do uh, uh, battery test and uh, boost and everything as you are used to do. Uh, you still have the 48 volt uh, or nominal voltage as the break point between power limitation and current limitation. Um, and uh, it uh, adheres to the current limitation from controller. If you um, have a, like, want to charge with uh, 10 C, uh, 1 C or whatever you set your battery to, uh, charge it uh, down to 47 volt. Um, and we also have this special uh, li uh, range for, or startup range actually for uh, lithium ion batteries with. Uh, Maybe as you said, poor BMS. That uh, that uh, where you need to be very careful how much current you uh, start to charge the batteries. So that's also implemented in this module. Uh, for protections, it's uh, reverse polarity and fuse. And yeah, also the common rectifiers uh, um, functionality like over voltage shutdown if it uh, goes above the 58 or whatever you set and. And uh, it's a short circuit proof, of course. Yeah, so we have uh, actually three voltage uh, variants, and the one was the 48, and then we have the same for the 110 volt, and uh, just a different part number and keying. So we'll skip to next. Um, the input range uh, on the 110 volt is uh, from 102 to 145 uh, and then you have extended range down to 90 and it's the same limitations as uh, mentioned for 48 volts uh, and then the input current of course is uh, lower since uh, it's a uh, higher dc voltage um, the maximum is, is uh, um, shown on, on uh, during overload, of course, uh, but uh, in our system solutions, it's uh, it's tuned in. Um, yeah, not so much more to mention here. Uh, so DC output is uh, is a new window. 97 to 45 is the adjustable range. It has a default voltage at 122. Um, so uh, what's uh, new on this compared to the 48 volt? Since the 110 volt range is uh, can have uh, many different type of battery configurations, uh, 54 cells or uh, even uh, up to 60 cells maybe. Uh, so we have made this um, uh, current limit floor uh, adjustable by the default voltage and the default voltage on all on on the DC or both uh, rectiverter and also all other uh, LTEC power modules are uh, adjustable so you can adjust it and it will remember it if disconnected from the controller. Um, yeah, this one also has the reverse polarity and the fuse as protection, and yeah, it's the same as the um, um, 48 volt variant. And then uh, last voltage is uh, 220 volt range, uh, and uh, this is uh, um, 204 to 290, and the extended range is down to 180 volt. So it's uh, quite uh, wide. Um, actually, this current uh, should be lower. So there's a typo, a typo in my presentation on the input current. Uh, and also, of course, the ripple is uh, reduced. Uh, on the output side, it's uh, again very similar to the 110 volt, just uh, uh, twice the voltage. Um, and also, this has the functionality of of uh, adjusting the current limit floor uh, by adjusting the default voltage. Um, 
then a couple of slides on some common uh, things and then we'll move on to the q a session uh, so the leds on the front is the same as you are used to with other ltech modules uh, however we have now two ports both the ac output and the dc output so when the dc is in output mode um, so we decided to just uh, do oring. Uh, so if uh, the green will light, if uh, one of the two ports is okay, and the same yellow will uh, light up, lit up if uh, if either is in morning, and same if either is an alarm. Um, and that means you can have this combination, which is uh, has been uh, strange to some. Uh, in for instance, if the AC output port is okay, but uh, there is a, the, the AC input is dropped, so we don't have any rectifier function. Yeah. Uh, of course, if uh, the zero watt module, uh, you will uh, just disable the uh, rectifier, uh, um, the the DC port, DC output port alarms. And um, yeah, operating temperature is uh, up to. 75 volt, uh, 75 degrees C. Um, you have the rating from 55, both on each port, and, and uh, to up to 1800 watt in the total output. Um, yeah, and then for certification, it's uh, UL1778 uh, and also the EN62040-1. And this one uh, is uh, will keep alive for until 2022 or something like that. So we'll uh, we will uh, rely on this, uh, and it's 6950-1 uh, as well. Uh, but uh, and the transition to the new standard here, 62368, will come uh, at a later stage uh, because this is uh, not ready for uh, UPS. Uh, so far so we will rely on this for the next couple of years um yeah normal emc uh, and also ups cmc and also rail european rail up uh, emc also uh, tested um yeah and then we are ready for the q a session yes yeah, so for now not too many questions, but you mentioned the 220 volt DC variant. Yep. Where, where is that uh, being used typically? Uh, yeah, it's um, many places. Uh, it, we have some uh, rail applications and also some uh, industrial systems uh, that has some 220 volt DC loads. Um, it's uh, as in in the start, if you have a combination of AC and DC load, then then uh, the rectiverter really fits very well, and and then you you just pick the rectiverter module based on your DC load. That's uh, the concept. So if your DC load requires 220 volt, then then you use the 220 volt uh, rectiverter. Okay, thank you. So um, yeah, another question. Transition time from loss of AC mains to backup from battery or genset is it an inrush current equivalent UPS capacity required from the rectiverter solutions? Uh, inrush current when you try, uh, so I can do the transition time first, that's zero because the the AC output is uh, continuously driven, um, so it's sort of close to the online UPS uh, concept. Uh, uh, so it's uh, internally in the module, it will uh, it will just uh, turn around this uh, bidirectional DC stage, the LLC, uh, and and then feed back to the boost voltage, uh, uh, feeding this. Uh, um, inverter uh, output stage uh, so that's how that works but i didn't quite catch the no it's, it's, the, uh, it's the three questions in one so really so what's the inrush current the inrush current of the module on the ac output is is uh, is uh, similar to a two kilowatt he uh, so uh, uh, it's um 
the inrush current is less than the, I don't have an exact figure, but it's less than the, um, uh, I think it's 14 amp actually on the 2 kilowatt HE and, and also this one. Um, but it's for rectifier modules, it's, it's typically uh, in the same range or less than the uh, peak. Uh, or the, the AC input current limitation, which is uh, 12 amps for um, flat pack to 2 kilowatt HE and, and also for the rectifier. Okay. And uh, what is the equivalent UPS capacity required from the rectiverter solutions? Uh, UPS capacity, well, you, here you just to pick the solution you want, which has sort of a, a million in touch about that. Uh, how many slots, and uh, one phase or three phase, and then you just need to populate modules. Uh, you can build as you go or fully populate it once. Uh, so uh, uh, we have uh, up to uh, yeah, we love and 90 kVA. We also built uh, up to 108 uh, kVA for uh, some rail applications in, in Norway. So yeah, okay. uh, but it will yeah, see. it will be in next session. Yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, yeah, probably covers yeah. also some of the upcoming questions. I think we will be moving to Milan now. We have got more questions, but we will respect your time first and foremost. And every question will be dealt with after if we don't have the time to cover them now. So, Milan, I will now make you the presenter. Okay. Good morning or good afternoon for you. Welcome to this webinar. So, uh, next session will be for the Rectiverter system. Uh, so let's start. So a system solution, as uh, Bjorn mentioned, uh, the rectiverter is uh, unique that is combine the rectifiers and inverter in same box. And is eliminating the requirement for the static switch. It is more compact and simple uh, solution with only single controller and more reliable, uh, less component, and there is no external static transfer switch required. It has a dual operation in main mode, it's providing the AC and DC output at the same time, and there is seamless transfer from AC to DC feed. So, and there is height overload and quick trip capacity in boot inverter and mains mode. As you can see here, uh, for the traditional mix set <clears throat> AC and DC system, which consists of uh, rectifier system plus inverter and static switch, the solution with uh, rectiverter you can save up to 50% because it has only single controller for boot. There is no static switch and it as well reduce some internal wiring and connection. And you can have more space, for example, to using the batteries for longer backup time. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we have a single controller which can communicate with the rectiverter modules. And, but as well, we can connect the other modules uh, from LTEC as uh, it, and it could be combined with rectifier, solar charger, and DC-DC converter if, it's, if there is a requirement for different voltage in the systems. <clears throat> Uh, Rectiverter has optional N and B input, so it if it is fit from the grid and it's uh, provide the AC, uh, the load for the AC, and as well it is connected with the batteries in two direction. It is could uh, recharge the batteries and as well take the energy from the batteries if the grid is off. A uh, traditional solution consists of ATS and to switch between the grid or the generator, as it's shown on the picture. But uh, Rectiverter optional A plus B input 
it is connected on the runtime. So the AC is connected to Rectiverter, then Genset is connected to Rectifiers and it's connected to the DC bus. So in case <coughs> of no grid, this is seamless transfer from the DC and the generator can uh, supply the DC side and you have not interrupted the AC output. As well, it could be possible not connect the generator, but the other maze with other frequency here, which is an advantage. As optional, could be connected the DC load. Uh, static switch function, <clears throat> as you know, for the traditional uh, UPS system, the static switch function is using if uh, mains fail to switch, if inverter fails to switch directly to the AC mains, or if there is some overload on the system, then static transfer switch switch to the AC input. Or if there is some shorted, so it's uh, switched to the AC input to clear the breakers. As advantage for using the static switch is overload capacity, which is 1000% for 10 milliseconds and transfer time, which is uh, less than four milliseconds. As disadvantage for the using static uh, switch function in the system is that mains need to be always available if you would like to use uh, this function and it need to be synchronized with the output if you will switch to the main directly to the mains and it this single point of failure uh, why not static switch in our solution we have built in overload capacity for 150 percent but it is limited for duration 15 seconds we have quick trip capacity which is 600 uh, percent at nominal current as advantage to using non-static switch there is no single point of failure uh rectiverter works in boot inverter and mains mode if there is no ac input available so it's not need available uh, mains and it could seamless uh, transfer from ac to dc feed and to supply the ac output and that's why there is no synchronization needed in inverter mode and there is parallel operation for overload and quick trip and you can extend the capacity to adding the module if it's required where we can utilize this technology as example it could be for hybrid telecom system when the grid or generator is connected to the rectiverters and supplying the ac load but as well in the system could be connected the solar charger with pv panels to supply dc load and if there is enough energy from the dc load uh, the rectiverter as priority take the energy from the solar and supply the ac load so you can save in case of using generator some fuel and it's working as hybrid side as well you can use the exit energy from the solar to charge the batteries there is optional uh, possibility to connect dc load as well the other example is for railway application for a level crossing so the rectiverter could be fit from the mains or from the generator 
and provide the uh, power from the to AC load and as well it could charge the batteries and have provide the power for DC load. It could be in more variants we have 48, 110 and 220 loads variant of these modules. As well it could be adding the DC DC converter if it's required at some other voltage which should be supply. Uh, I would like to mention something regarding maze disturbance. Uh, Reactivator in AC AC mode, it has two stage, stages. It's convert uh, from AC to DC and DC to AC. So it's not going straight. The, efficiency of this conversion is 96 percent which is quite okay if you compare with conversion in for the rectifier system and inverter so it's much more higher so here are some examples how the input and output looks so this is the range of the inverter voltage on the ac input this is the low voltage, then is normal operation from 185 up to 275 volt AC, and there is high voltage. For the high voltage, the rectiverter just uh, shut down the input and working from DC side. So for normal operation, as you can see on this graph, if you have a low voltage, the output, the red one, is constant. And as well, if you have higher voltage, then it's stabilized and the output is constant. Then the other example is if it's uh, connected as input the diesel generator, you can see the AC input characteristic. This is... Uh, if the generator is heavily loaded, this is the typical AC input characteristic. So if then you can see how the rectiverter, um, what is the output from the rectiverter is more smooth and is stabilized the AC output. As other example is from real life, this is uh, traffic market. This is the customer from the Sweden. And as you can see, there are some main disturbance. This is because of static transfer switch connected some transi transients to the load. And as you can see, uh, the output from the rectiverter was uh, uh, smooth and it was not this uh, over wave uh, shift or something. Then uh, the other example is for the ring wave. So if the other equipment is connected to the grid or disconnected, then is some ring wave. So as you can see here, it's up to 100%. But the output, the red one, is stabilized and there is only small uh, disturbance there. Uh, then the other example is if there is short mains interactions, as you can see here. But there is no interruption on the output and it's uh, uh, is okay and is harmonic but I would like to mention here that is not switching to the batteries because it's very short so it's taking from the capacitors and it will not you know if you have a lot of short mains interruption in the network so the batteries could be damaged because uh, there is high very high current if the uh, inverter or static switch is switching to the uh, mains to the uh, inverter mode from the batteries. Then we will look on the system elements. 
as was mentioned by Bjorn, some highlights regarding the reactivator modules. I think I can skip it because it was in the previous uh, presentation. What I would like to highlight then that we can connect the reactivator with different uh, controller, which is SmartPak S, SmartPak to touch and SmartPak R. What is the main different if you are using 110 or 220 voltage variant of reactivator, you need to use SmartPak to touch for the 48 volt variants, you can use SmartPak S or SmartPak R. There are some highlights here, but I think we are in short time, so we'll continue. Here we have some standard building blocks. This is uh, our solution 5 or 7U with 4U distribution on the top and power X for the reactivator terms modules in the top picture. This is the six QVA output power and one phase input and one phase output. Uh, we have manual bypass switch in the distribution and AC load uh, breakers. So this, uh, the system below has the same distribution as above, but it is three phase input or three phase output, but it's, it could be connected as one phase as well and this capacity of the system is 18 kilowatt in this case. Uh, boot system could be uh, with different variant of the voltage for reactivators, which is 48, 110 or 220 volt DC. Then we have telecom variants, which is without uh, manual bypass switch, but it has battery distribution and AC and DC distribution inside and the output power is 6 kVA. It is one phase input output. And this variant could be with SmartPak 2 or touch or SmartPak S controller. Then we have other power cores which we call combined because this power core has uh, rectifiers and rectiverters power X together. So if you would like to extend the DC power to recharge the higher battery, capac battery capacity, then this system fit it. This is only 48 volts variants and we have two system building blocks. What is the difference is that we are using here uh, two power X for the rectifier, so the power for DC is up to 24 kilowatts, and for the AC is uh, six kVA one phase output. And it consists uh, the battery AC and DC distribution as well, and it could be with uh, SmartPak to touch or SmartPak S controller. Then we have one new solution, which we call integrated or standalone, and it could be connected to the existing system. This is with uh, up to three QVA, only two modules, and there is socket uh, for the AC connection. This variant is without the controller, but it could be connected to the existing ELK system and connected to the controller which is already on the site or using a standalone with, without the controller. Then we have to you solution which we call integrated. This is the single input phase and uh, output. It is 6, six kVA. It is for all voltage variant 48, 110 and 230 and is up to 6 kVA total output and this is bulk AC and DC output. And inside is basic or basic industrial controller with combination of SmartPak to touch. It is most like used for industrial application because it requires 
separate DC and battery distribution in this case, which will be connected as additional for this system. Then we have the smaller reactiverter two system, which is one phase input output, and is only for most like for telecom application for the eight volts. Then we have four modules could be installed with four modules, which is up to six kVA capacity. Then it's smart pack R controller, and here in is uh, distribution. We have two position for battery breakers and three single pole 30 millimeter load breakers and uh, AC load distribution one or two pole. If it's one pole is three position and for two pole is only one position. As well inside is LVBD and shunt and other things which are in distributions. Then we are going for the or large Reactiverter systems. We divided for three families. The reactiverter large one system. It is from capacity 18 up to 54 kVA, and it has A and B input, which means that you have reactiverters modules and rectifiers modules. The rectifiers modules are optional. This system is. 48 volt DC floating, and it has uh, two pole uh, DC distributions. As well, it has uh, the manual bypass switch, which is the optional. Here are the battery breakers. Then we have the second family, which we call large two systems. This is a telecom system which are 48 volt minus grounded. It has only the rectifiers, only A input, rectiverters input, sorry. And it could have as optional manual bypass switch plus some battery distribution and AC and DC distribution with MCBs on the top. Then we have the larger system, which we call a large tree, is up to 90 kVA. This is the dual cabinet, which is combination of with uh, rectiverters and B input rectifiers. There is no manual bypass switch, but it has uh, AC and DC distribution as option and battery distribution and it could be equipped with the batteries inside the cabinet as well. That was all from my, for me, so maybe we can move for the questions. Thank you so much, Milan. Bjorn and uh, Milan, I will now go through all the questions that has come in, and uh, some may have been answered in the presentation already. Uh, just let me know, and we will quickly go to the next question. What is the maximum power possible to support with rectiverter systems? As I mentioned, we have this large system which is up to 90 kVA, but we had some custom project which was up to 120 kVA already. And another question. So concerning battery recharging, is it possible with programming a charge curve? Not, uh, you can program the voltage, but not sure what you mean by programming the charge curve. You can um, set up the voltage level for the float and we can have as well kind of boost voltage. But maybe we need more details what they mean by this program, the charge okay, so curve. And, uh, and you also can set the battery current limitation. Mm -hmm. In, in addition to the to the float voltage or okay, boost great. or as many as it. yeah so hopefully that will answer your question if not please uh, send us a following up question so will it will this rectiverter systems come with the new smart pack 2 touch controller or is it a 
panel mounted smart pack s controller but i'm not sure if it's dc side and or ac and and as milan said for dc it, uh, you can choose yeah. whatever you like of course you need to select a proper system solution for if you do have floating output you need to have two power breakers and these kind of things um and floating is yeah. default i guess milan for 110 and 220 volt DC. yeah yeah it's default because it's for industrial application and they don't ground it the system for the dc side of course okay. then uh, the other question is is okay gary is there yeah okay. I, how far did you come i actually lost my internet connection so great day here uh, we have been a little up and forth on the uh on the uh, on the question list um so i will just start from where i left off uh, and you will tell me if you have answered it already so is it possible to parallel the reverter system if so up to how many can you parallel uh, it depends on the systems because you need to connect the synchronization between the systems. But we, what we have experience, we parallel the two systems for now. But uh, my, uh, my lead could be extended for more. So, what is the high overload capability? in percentage of nominal power in these systems so is 150 percent for 15 seconds this is the overload capacity capability so what is the permanent overload capacity there is no permanent overload capacity if you would like to have higher capacity then you need to have higher power system or extend the system for more modules so and there is no permanent overall capacity. In the hybrid application, how is solar power prioritized when the generator is on? The solar power has always priority. So if you have enough power from the solar to supply the wool load, the wool load will be supplied from the solar. And as well, we have some set things which could be possible done in controller and if it will occur then we can switch off the generator if there is enough power from the solar during 10 minutes and then we have a question on this swedish case you brought up there was a voltage distortion presented well, do you know what the cause of that distortion was it was with connection uh, static switch there was some transient which was connected to the load if the static switch connect to the ac input directly okay thank you we have done with the next question and one last question has come in is it possible to parallel two times 90 kva large rectiver systems yeah but we need to have more information how they would like to connect if it will be supplied one load or how we need to know the whole concept of these systems to respond these uh, questions because it's not kind of straightforward if we don't have more information it's possible but it has some limitation i think and it's also depending on what why they want to parallel it if it's this a plus b system concept which is uh, typical in in many segments that you want to have full redundancy and and it's very limited how much more reliability you gain uh, with this functionality using uh, either instead of uh, one system with sufficient uh, modules in redundancy you, you probably have uh, close to the same uh, reliability um, yeah so if it's not the total capacity which is the goal uh, for uh, for asking to par parallel the systems great so that seems to be the last question that we have so gentlemen thank you so much for presenting
And to all of you in the audience, thank you for joining us today. If you have any further questions on the topic, feel free to contact your local LTAC team. And uh, then we will conclude our webinar. Take care, have a good day, and we will see you again soon. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.